right, welcome to this video. In this video, I will reveal to you my universal property acquisition flowchart. What it is, is it allows you to know how to acquire properties, how to make a good deal. And the uh, interesting thing here is that uh, most real estate investor gurus or teachers or promoters will tell you, you know, in this market, the only way to buy properties and make money is to buy them cheap. And though that is not uh, entirely wrong, actually that is true, uh, but there are other ways to make money on properties even if they're not very cheap. And let me show you how to do that. So um, in this uh, flowchart, well, I, I, my name is Trace Trahano. I'm an engineer by uh, training. I'm an inventor. I have over 20 patents to my name. And I'm also a real estate investor. And so as you can imagine, as an engineer by profession, I love flowcharts, okay? So um, because it allows you to outline the different de decisions that you have to make, you know, and uh, you just don't go by with your gut, okay? So that's a surefire way to lose money is if you just go by your gut because in the beginning you don't know a whole lot and you cannot trust your gut, okay? So for beginning investors, follow this flowchart and I guarantee you, you will make money. All right, so how, how does it work? So if you have a property that is uh, the value is 65% of, um, you know, the asking price is 65% of the ARV, if it is in a good area and if you have a buyer lined up, then you just market the deal uh, as a wholesale deal. Or even if you don't have a buyer lined up, you just market it. And I teach my students how to market deals very, very quickly, okay? So if the house, on the other hand, you can buy it cheap, okay, ARV stands for after repair value. That's basically the market value of the property once you've acquired, you know, um, once you have repaired it or renovated it, that's the market value of the property. So if you cannot buy it cheap, the question is, can you take over the mortgage payments, okay, from the seller? If the seller says yes to that, the other question is, you know, even though it's not dirt cheap, but is it cheap enough that it still has some equity? because you make money on the equity basically. So let's say the house is worth 100,000 and uh, the mortgage payment is only 500 bucks and you know uh, the loan is only 80,000 then voila that deal is um, is a is a very good deal even though it's not very cheap, okay? So uh, especially if the interest rate is uh, below 7% because what you can do is you can buy the property put it, uh, you know uh, but by taking over the loan and then you either become the landlord yourself, or you sell the deed, okay, to the ad, to, to other investors in exchange for five or ten thousand dollars, okay. So um, and then if uh, if it doesn't have that much equity, okay, what you can do is do a non-exclusive option to purchase. And what it is is you sell the property. Uh, basically, you're acting like a broker, even though you are not a broker. And the way to do that legally is having an option to buy the property because once you have the option to buy you can sell that option to other investors in exchange for cash or you can sell your right to buy that property okay and uh, you know that's how you're able to buy a property that uh, and and sell it even though you really don't own it yet okay so if the property is not in a good area let's say if it's in a bad area then what you can do especially if the property is below 10,000 is you can auction it on eBay or you may want to consider tying up with a nonprofit organization and doing a property donation. And the benefit to the uh, seller is that he gets he or she gets the tax advantages of donating a property. Okay, uh, I have in here this concept of a lease buyback. Uh, basically, what it is is I, I am selling the house to another investor, typically a landlord, with the right to buy it back after three or five years. And the beauty of, the, of that approach is that uh, not only do I get some cash up front by selling the property, but also I get some cash flow okay, every single month. Um, and then I also get the uh, appreciation of the property in three to five years. Okay, So uh, that one is a little bit more complicated, but I teach that to my students. So anyhow, uh, that's the... Uh, and then if, uh, the le if, if after selling, if after trying to sell the property, you can find a buyer, okay, you can also do what I call the lease option marketing program in which you find a tenant 
buyer for the property and you get half of the non-refundable option consideration or half of the down payment. So you still make money on it. And worst case, you know, worst case scenario is you can find a buyer, you can find a tenant, you just follow up the property, you just follow up the seller every 30 days and uh, see, you know, um, if there is something there that you can do. So by doing it this way, you're able to make money uh, from more properties, not just the cheapy ones, not just the ones that you can buy at a discount, but also other properties that may not have that much of a discount, um, you're still able to make money on them, okay? So but just to watch out though, this flowchart doesn't work for properties that are listed with real estate agents and properties that are being sold by the banks because those, your best bet is to, is to make an all cash properties, but if you're dealing with a motivated seller, okay, use this universal property acquisition flowchart and I guarantee you, you will make more money buying more properties with having very, very little risk, all right? So again, my name is Trace Trajano. You can reach me at moneyyoda at gmail.com if you have questions, all right? Again, it's moneyyoda at gmail.com. Thanks.